I don't know. Just look. Just get rid of her. Okay. Just I don't know. Bury bury the body. I guess whatever. Just I've got. I'm busy. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? It's me. It's Mr. Yantix. I'm back again. You all thought I was dead. <laughs> you were only partially correct. Um, I'm back with another video. Uh, I would say due to popular demand, but just one guy asked for it, so that's good enough for me. So today I'm going to talk to you very briefly about uh, Wing Chun's power delivery system. Uh, and don't forget, I'm not teaching you how to do Wing Chun in these videos, I'm just talking to you about Wing Chun and some Wing Chun concepts that I find very interesting and I want to share with you. Okay, so power, uh, Wing Chun power delivery, how does it differ from a normal martial art power delivery? Okay, well first of all, as you may well know, all Wing Chun strikes are straight strikes, We're talking straight punches, straight palm attacks, straight eye attacks, throat attacks, all this kind of good stuff. Uh, always straight. Why is it always straight? Okay, so to answer that question, we need to look at the actual stance. I can't show it to you right now because I'm not that clever on the computer. But essentially, if you look at a Wing Chun horse stance, okay, what you've got is a set of triangles all built together. So if you imagine like a, like a crane or a, or a series of scaffolding where it's all triangular structures all working against each other to provide a strong, stable hole. That's pretty much what the basic Wing Chun stance is all about. Now, obviously we don't attack from a horse stance, nor do we defend from one. But when we start to activate that stance and generate power from it, that's when those triangles really start to add up, okay? So you're stacking triangles through the hole all the way from your ankle, to your knee, to your hip, up your torso, to your elbow, to your fist, or whatever you're striking with, straight at the opponent, okay? So this is why we have a knees bent, we have a low center of gravity. So as we do a chun ma, let's say, turning stance, as a turning punch, we'll be activating, turning, screwing into the ground, dropping the stance, and really taking the, the, the stability of planet Earth, if you will, up from the heel, through the knee joint, through the hip joint, forward pelvis, straight through, into the elbow joint here, which would then drive, the hand forward, and then you start getting into sort of one inch punch territory here where this bottom three knuckles of the straight fist, as we punch and Wing Chun with a straight fist, not a, uh, not a pronated fist, we're here. We'll be striking through with the bottom three knuckles here. So the last inch, as Bruce Lee demonstrated, is really where the power is activated. But it comes from the ground, it comes from the heel. Okay, it comes from the heel through the hip. Hip is massively important. If you find any uh, any striking art, they always uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on the hip movement and the hip involvement or the turning of the torso. Okay, so even though we're striking straight in Wing Chun, we are striking with a rotation. Okay, so the rotation in the hip translates to straight movement of the weapon. Okay, and of course, when you're using certain Wing Chun blocks, you're also going straight down that exact same center line with that energy. So if I'm turning with a Bu Sao to block, or a Gan Sao to block, or a Tan Sao, whatever I'm doing, I am rotating as I activate that energy, okay? And the whole point of games like Chi Sao and things like that is to make sure that you're activating that energy at the right time. So it's not just a case of just blasting as hard as you possibly can down center. It's a case of moving down center and activating the power you've generated at the right point to be effective, okay? so. Very quick video today, but hopefully it should get things uh, get you thinking about stuff. So Wing Chun power delivery comes from the ground. It is built from a strong structure, which is made from triangles in your stance, all the way from your heels to your elbows, and no higher, okay? The power is generated forward using a rotational energy in the hip, more often than not. Don't forget that rotational energy can also be replaced with forward and backwards stepping energy, but we'll get into that in a different video. But ultimately the hip is still gonna be involved. All right, whether you're striking with it front or backhand doesn't matter. Obviously, in Wing Chun, we don't have a concept of a front and a backhand, even when our hip is rotated. But again, that's probably a wider discussion. But as far as power delivery is concerned, if you're training Wing Chun now, go to class, go to go and train with your, your training partners, or whatever. You start to think about how that power delivery looks, and a good way to test this, rather than just hitting a uh, pads, somebody's holding them, whatever, try punching a heavy bag or a wall bag. Okay. And if you're generating energy correctly, you should be getting forced away unless you are properly planted. So you need to plant that, that heel into the ground and strike, and it should be going only forward. And that's a really interesting test you can do as well. Uh, if you're hitting stuff and you're bouncing back, it means that you're not rooted into the ground enough. If you're hitting stuff and there's nothing happening, you're not rooted into the ground enough, are you? So really, you use planet Earth behind your heel 
to drive energy in a straight line using a lattice work of triangles. And that's basically how wind your power delivery works. Any questions? Hmm? Well, good then. I guess that's all agreed. We can stop discussing it, ever. Um, but no, seriously, if you do have any comments or questions, or if you completely disagree with me, or if I'm completely wrong, put it in the comments down there. Uh, I suppose I should probably tell you all to like and subscribe and all that stupid internet bullshit. I don't really give a fuck whether you do or not, to be honest, but it's all there for you. Uh, and it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I do intend to make more videos, but if you've got any specific topics you want me to talk about, again, put it in the comments and I will have a think and I'll come back with something that might be uh, edifying. Anyway, gotta go and uh, bury a hooker, so I'll be off. I'll see you later. Ta-ta.